his wife and child onto their horse. He tells them he loves them. He tells them to run and to not look back. So they do. As she demands for her husband to stay out of trouble, the woman knows this is the last time she will see her husband alive. The man gathers himself, then presses the barn doors open with a great force, coming face to face with an army, with the inevitable, with fate. Ever since I was young, I've always been fascinated with the idea of people fighting unwinnable battles. The Battle of the Alamo, the Spartans' famous last stand against the Persians, men holding the line knowing they can't win, that they can't overcome, yet they choose to fight. Such heroic resolve to know that death has come for you, that you choose to greet him head on. Stories of the ultimate sacrifice, like the Chernobyl 3. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union. Bravely heading into the nuclear disaster zone in an effort to prevent further destruction. Or the story of John Robert Fox, who ordered an airstrike on his position in order to stop the advancing Nazi army and allow his fellow US troops to retreat. Or James in Fallout 3, the father who sacrificed himself to save his son and to keep his dream of pure clean drinking water for the wasteland alive. These stories, be it history or fiction, always seem to connect with me on a very very deep level. The bravery exuded from these men seemed to light a fire within my soul. John Marston from Red Dead Redemption is one of these men. Released in May of 2010 to critical acclaim, Rockstar gave us their first open world western game in Red Dead Redemption. Carrying the Red Dead name from Red Dead Revolver, a Rockstar developed PS2 game released in 2004 to pretty mixed opinions at the time, Red Dead Redemption sought to drop the arcade style gameplay of Red Dead Revolver and bring the GTA open world formula into a western setting, and boy did they do it. A beautiful yet haunting world that does a great job showing you just how violent and rough life was in the early 1900s. That boy turns up. <laughs> Uh, that boy on the shine, boy. Ooh, ooh, he doing the shine walk. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> be it bandits, the harsh lands, or the many animals Red Dead Redemption has, and I mean many. The first open world Rockstar game to have so much wildlife, in fact. Birds, deer, bears, cougars. I mean, I still remember playing the game and hearing a rattlesnake sound effect thinking, oh, that's some cool ambiance or something, only to look down and see an actual rattlesnake coming for me. The world was massive and packed with life and detail. But even with all its impressive aspects, one thing stands far and above everything else. And that's the story. Red Dead Redemption is a story about violence, betrayal, corruption, love, hate. But the underlying theme of Red Dead Redemption is change. Red Dead Redemption is the reality of the dying Wild West and what remains of the cowboys and gangs that are losing their place in the world. With civilization ever expanding, bringing law and order for the outlaws of the West, that means the end. The end of their power, their control, their freedom, and, in a lot of cases, their life. John is one such former outlaw, once one of the right-hand men to Dutch Vandalin of the Vandalin Gang. After being left for dead by the people he once considered family, John is attempting to put his past behind him, have a family, live an honest life. But the funny thing about the past is, it rarely seems to stay there. The government tracks down John takes his family, tasks him with hunting down his old gang members in exchange for the safe return of his loved ones. The John we meet in Red Dead Redemption is a very different man from his time as an outlaw. Robbing, killing, and whatever else Dutch would have him do, John was by no means a good person, but rather a misguided and lost soul. John as a youth was very much bought into the ideals that his gang leader and father figure Dutch preached. He believed in Dutch. Dutch essentially raises John in a lot of ways, teaches him how to read, how to write, shoot, he molds John into the weapon he needs him to be, much like he did to the other members of the gang. But as John gets older, he begins to see Dutch for who he is, he begins to question him and doubt every word that comes out of his mouth. He starts to see the lie that he and the entire gang have been living. This is something I can relate to on a very personal level. Without getting into too much detail, growing up much like any young boy, I admired my father and I saw him as a great, amazing person. But as I got older, I began to understand that he really wasn't anything to admire. And now as a grown man, I see even clearer now that he was never the man I thought he was. What I love about John is that he is a very down-to-earth person. 
He values honor, respect, and he understands very well that he doesn't understand this new world. He's a relic. A civilized world has no need for a gunslinger anymore, so John chooses to leave the outlaw life and decides to become a humble rancher, possibly the most polar opposite to what his life has been up to this point. Hard, grueling work, little pay, long hours, but it's honest. Much like kids playing house, John is playing rancher. He's doing his best, trying to fit into the mold of this new shaping society in hopes of putting his old life behind him, giving his family something, something meaningful, something real, something he can pass on to his son. But life can be cruel. Rob Wietzhoff is the voice actor for John, and he's one of the most charming people I've ever seen. I finally feel like what I'm doing is fulfilling, because ultimately it's to provide for my family. Born and raised in a small town, Rob really had no interest in acting. But in his college years, Rob would travel to LA to visit an old girlfriend of his. During this visit, he would interact with friends of movie stars and directors. It's during this trip, Rob would begin to have aspirations of acting and living in a big city. So he moved to LA. There, Rob would work as a bartender while he pursued his acting career, landing commercials and other gigs that did just enough to keep him pushing. Rob would see the homes of the rich and successful alongside the Hollywood Hills and think once he reached those heights, once he was living in a home like that, then he would be happy. So with that, he dealt with it. Dealt with the constant stress and strain of trying to make it as an actor in Hollywood, the ever-present worry of where your next paycheck might come from, or if you've booked enough gigs. Rob began missing the life he had left back home in this small, quiet town. His simple life. Then one day, Rob would receive a call that would change not only his life, but the life of many people around the world. He just didn't know it yet. I got a call from my agent. Hey, you, you booked that Untitled Video Game Project. And I said, oh. Really? With Rob not being into video games, he was a bit taken back. But when you're a young, starving artist, work is work. So he took the gig. It would come to light during production that Rob hadn't really played any of the GTA series. When directors would often reference previous games or characters, Rob would kind of play along until one day he was asked straight out if he was familiar with the series, and he truthfully answered no. But as he was doing great, no one really had an issue. So Rob continued to voice John. As Rob continued to voice John, he would meet someone. Someone special. Rob would start dating his now wife, Taylor. What started out as Rob hopelessly pursuing an extremely busy and ambitious woman with no time for dating, Rob would say two words that completely stunned Taylor. I'll wait. He said, when you are, let me know. And so, the next day I called him and I said, I'm ready now. With a new family forming and the stresses of LA looming, Rob wanted out. He wanted better for his family, a safe place for his children to grow. So, after his work on Red Dead Redemption finished, he decided to move back to his hometown. Happiness is not a destination. You have to enjoy the journey. These words from Rob's mother resonated with him. Life is hard. It will try to break you, corrupt you. It will have you constantly comparing yourself to others and taking for granted what you have right in front of you. You must appreciate everything you have. Your family, your loved ones, your health. The fact you woke up this morning, the roof you have over your head. Because the things and the people we have today they might not be here tomorrow. With Rob and his wife expecting children, I can only imagine the joy and happiness that comes with that anticipation, but also the stress, the worry, the self-doubt. Unfortunately, time doesn't wait for you to be ready. Time waits for no man. So for Rob and his wife, the time had come for their children to be born. They were born at 28 and a half weeks or whatever, and spent seven weeks in the NICU where they were all wired up to different things, keeping them alive. At birth, Rob's children experienced complications and were in critical condition. Thankfully, now they're healthy, but I can only imagine that situation really showed Rob just how important everything is to him. He is a man that appreciates and loves his family. It's the thing I respect most about him. It's impossible for me to listen to this man speak and not melt in my boots. I completely believe Rob Wietoff was destined to play John Marston. Rob's endearing personality is sprinkled throughout his performance as John, and I just don't know if anyone else would have been able to capture this character as perfectly as Rob did. Both men's love for their family, both men being out of place in a changing world. Simple men given an incredible task, and both accomplishing it in incredible fashion. Red Dead Redemption does a great job making you feel like a badass gunslinger from a spaghetti western. 
If it's taking out gangs, overthrowing governments, or battling the undead, John is a certified unstoppable badass, through and through. Unless it's some random dude in a draw, I fucking suck at that mini game. John is an expert when it comes to shooting. With his dead eye ability, John can slow everything around him to a damn near standstill. It makes me think of stories athletes tell when they reach a state of utter focus. Things just slow down. You just have supreme confidence. If it's lining up the perfect shot, marking multiple targets at once to clear out a room full of goons, John can do it all. The game does a great job not only telling John's story, but building him up to be this unstoppable force. Well. He shot in the very beginning of his journey in Left 4 Dead, showing just how rusty he is. But as we play more and he gets back into the swing of things, John's on some stellar shit cause he gets his groove back. It's almost like in professional wrestling where a wrestler is built up to be this badass, being pushed to his limits but always coming out on top. Fight after fight, John comes out on top. If it's clearing out old gang hideouts or reclaiming forts overrun with outlaws or the Mexican army, John is a man possessed to get his family back. But as every story needs a hero, every hero needs a villain. And for John, that's Dutch Vanderlyn. Dutch represents the dark past that looms over John. Dutch was the man that led him to doing terrible and unspeakable things. Dutch was the man that used John as a tool for his own ends. Dutch was the man that led John and other members of the Vanderlyn gang into the abyss. An abyss that John has been trying to pull him and his family out of. We spend most of Red Dead Redemption hunting Bill Williamson and Javier down. And you get the feeling that they're really small fish. Violent and dangerous men for sure, but no, they aren't the price. The head of the snake that the government wants, no, that man is Dutch Vanderlyn. After tracking both men to Mexico and aiding in the revolution that trades one vicious dictator out for another, John catches Bill and Javier. Then his focus is on Dutch, the man that stands between him and his family. In the last act of the game, Dutch starts to haunt and hunt John. You and, and, and your friend there, the professor, we're gonna kill the both of you. <laughs> Why you wanna do a thing like that? Trying to make John doubt his mission, doubt his family, saying everyone in the gang slept with his wife. This man here, oh, he married a whore. And that Jack wasn't his kid, berating him about working for the government. You get a glimpse into the mind games Dutch plays with people. He's a textbook narcissist and a smooth talker. He can range from a charming, likable guy to a bloodthirsty killer in a split second. <laughs> Video games are an extremely interesting medium. They can tell us amazing stories. They place us in strange and breathtaking worlds. They can make us laugh. Look, old man, are you gonna keep yapping? Or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping. They can also make us cry. They allow such a unique connection that can be offered by any other medium. They give us control. They give us the ability to navigate the game world and interact with the characters, build connections, friendships, rivalries, and some allow us to make decisions. And some are cruel. We spend 20-ish hours with John fighting his way through the West and through Mexico, doing the government's bidding, capturing Bill Williamson and Javier, and after finally ending the paradox that is Dutch Vanderlyn. We gotta stop meeting like this. We finally get our family back. That's when Rockstar's cruelty begins. We begin to play missions centered around John and his family. Spending time with Jack and Abigail, finally working as a rancher, saving your boy from a ferocious bear attack, you know, family shit. You almost become lulled into a sense of security, a sense that everything's finally right. John did it. John was able to put his past to rest, able to prove himself to his family, able to trade his bandolier for a rancher's coat. There's a scene in Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare that I believe sums up John Marston perfectly. John asks his son about a book he's reading. It's kind of dumb. That should suit me just fine. And as Jack begins to go on about his book, his speech begins to slowly drown out to the point where neither we nor John can hear him. In fact, John isn't interested in the book Jack's reading, but he wants to be in Jack's life. He wants to show interest in his son and his son's books because he understands what they mean to him. He loves his son. Watching this as a teenager, this scene was very heartwarming, but as a man, I relate to this scene so much, it's really crazy. When you love someone, they could be talking to you about the ingredients in their cereal, and you could care less about it, but if that's what's on their mind, or their passion, you'll be all ears. Rob Wietoff gets emotional talking about how great his family is, and honestly, I fight back tears just listening to it. Sorry, I'm... I start going down this path and it's hard for me to stop. But, um... 
He understands just how easily he could have lost his children, how easy the people he loves so much could have been taken from him. I myself make sure to stop and think about all the good I have in my life. My wife, my mother, my brother, my dogs, things that mean more to me than any amount of money, success, or power ever could. Much like Rob, John almost lost the people most important to him. He loves his family, and he damn near moved hell and earth to show it. And in doing so, he's finally reunited with them. There's just one issue. The game isn't over. Where are the credits? I mean, the big bad is dead. Dutch is dead. But it's not over? No. In fact, it'll never be over. It's like Dutch said, when I'm gone, I'll just find another monster. The moment that Dutch Vandalin died, John becomes that very monster. When playing the epilogue for Red Dead Redemption for the first time, I fell victim to Rockstar's trap. Having your family back, having a blast living as a farmer, and much like John, I was in bliss. I was happy. But when the army shows up, I was a bit taken back. Looks like things is about to get settled once and for all. But I mean, whatever. I, we've been in worse situations. So you fight wave after wave, dispatching the men before you. Then Uncle gets shot and dies. Uncle, who is this lovable, good for nothing drunk? Why don't I get to warm and tender embrace? Laying dead was a shock for me. I mean, yeah, he was annoying, but he was also a funny goof. You were supposed to look after the place. I did. Well, I did my best. Thing is, there was too many of them. Uh, well, I thought you was dead. I wasn't drinking. Hold your excuses until you figured out which one to use. It's in this moment you might start to feel something is off. Like things will never be the same again. That only a few moments ago, the happiness you lived in will be gone forever. As the army continues to surround the farm, Abigail and Jack are terrified, but why? We're John. We're John Marston. We're a killing machine. But they don't stop. More and more men pour in to the point where John and his family retreat to the barn. John loads his family onto their horse. He tells them he loves them. He tells them to run and to never look back. And they do. They flee in horror from the impending doom that awaits the other side of the barn door. Abigail knows this is the last time she'll see John alive. John gathers himself, then presses the barn doors open with a great force, coming face to face with an army, with the inevitable, with fate. Games often walk a fine balance between being fun to play and telling an interesting story. Sometimes both aspects can stumble over each other. Often games force the player into cutscenes that might make the player do something they don't want to. This can be immersion breaking, taking away from the experience. Too many cutscenes and a game can start to feel less like a game and more like a movie. But not enough story and the player might lose purpose. Rockstar finds a way to give the player both and neither at the same time. In John's last stand, when John pushes open the barn door, his dead eye ability activates. And you can choose to line up as many shots as possible, try to take out as many people as you can, or you can choose to do nothing. The outcome is the same. John Marston is slain. The monster has been got. Our hero falls. You can try over as many times as you want trying to headshot as many soldiers as you can, you can't win. You're given the ability to try, but destined to always fail. When I played this as a kid, I was dumbfounded. I mean, John can't die. Uh, not like this. John is, well, John, a badass. Disbelief is the only word I can think of to describe that moment. I mean, why didn't John run? John and his family could have gotten away. I mean, he has all kind of connections. Surely he could have escaped to Mexico or something. But no, John knows what must be done. John isn't a scholar, but he's not dumb either. He's the last big bad from the Vanderlyn gang. He knows he's done bad, and he knows his time has come. So John gets his family to safety. And unlike Bill, unlike Javier, unlike Dutch, John isn't running. Not anymore. He's seen the links that these people will go to. He knows that they will get what they want. He knows that much. And what they want is him. When I was a kid and I heard these stories of people fighting unwinnable battles, I would often wonder what motivates a man to do something like that. I mean, why not run? Try and get away, no matter how slim the chances. But now as a man, I know that answer. What motivates them is their family, their friends people they care most for. If it's fighting for freedom, family, or whatever's right, what motivates a man to live is the same thing that they would die for. The only thing that matters more when facing the impossible 
when you can't win is what you can't afford to lose. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. This is my first time attempting a video essay, so if you liked it, please leave a like. Subscribe, we're on the road to 1K. If you like my content and you're looking for more, click on one of these videos I got on the screen now. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.